Hello friends, welcome to this guide, uh, part of the Dota 2 Psychology Meta Guide to Winning in Solo Queue uh, series, and in this guide I'm actually going to be talking about these rules that I talked about in the introduction, this strict set of rules that I like to follow that I've acquired from, from you know, piece by piece from people in, uh, in the industry playing competitive. So these are rule, the rules that I, I give to people when they ask, Jenkins, I want to go pro. How do I go pro? How do I gain MMR? These are the rules that I that I give to people, and uh, probably, quite possibly, the most important uh, guide in, within this series. Depending on what you struggle with, maybe you might struggle with something else. But for most people, this is going to be the important one that you're going to gain a lot of MMR from. So, to, just to give you a little context on the video content that you're actually seeing here, this is a uh, just a Sardar game in six to seven K average MMR. And the reason I'm showing you this is because number one. It's a little hard to come up with something to actually show as content when I'm talking about these kind of like meta rules because it's not really strictly Dota related. Uh, but this game in particular was one that directly after I, I did one of the, the rules, which is to, to stop playing, just to, to limit myself essentially. So this is uh, for sure a nice, uh, this is me following the rules essentially. So just to get into them, these, these here, here it is, I'll just get into it. So. Rule number one, um, if you're tilting, mute the entire enemy team and your entire team. Use the mute feature. It's there for a reason, and you might think that it sounds like a joke. In fact, I would say that you might you might think that a lot of these sound like a joke, but I can guarantee you when you actually do these and put this into practice in games, you're going to see a huge MMR increase. You're going to win games that you otherwise wouldn't have won because you're tilting. Use that mute feature. It... it protects you from tilting and I, I don't want to hear people say they don't tilt they don't get toxic that's bullshit I've seen I've seen people that are purer than Gandhi and Mother Teresa tilt in rage and if they had used the mute feature they might not have tilted in rage which might not have added to somebody else's tilt in rage which added to their tilt in rage and all of a sudden you're at war with your own team instead of against the enemies which is the point of the game so you got to use that mute feature Mute the enemy team. You don't want to hear them flaming you. None of that stuff. Even if you don't add toxicity back into the game by typing or by, by using voice chat or pinging or anything like that, even if you're not toxic, which you shouldn't be, um, you still are being affected by their toxicity. So just make sure that you're using that mute feature and in the worst case scenario, you can mute the entire enemy team and your entire team. I would wager that for most people, um, if you took all the games that they were toxic in their Dota career, if you took every single game and you put them back in that game and give them a positive mindset, you know, maybe you go buy them ice cream and then you put them in the same game. If you do that, I would wager that most people would be probably like plus plus 500 MMR right now, to be honest. Just think of all the games that you might have lost because you pinged somebody or because you got in a fight or anything toxic. So that's why that's rule number one. If, if you are tilting or being toxic or somebody's being toxic to you, use that mute feature. Okay. So rule number two is always try hard in solo queue, no matter what. Even if somebody's feeding couriers, even if somebody's feeding down mid or TPing into their fountain with nature's profit, do it. And the reason that you should do that is because in one out of five of those games where somebody is feeding, if you just don't add toxicity and you just ignore them because they're being a bully and you're just ignoring a bully, what happens to bullies when they get ignored? Well, they stop. They don't have, they, they're not getting that fuel for the fire, so they stop. And I'm not saying everybody's going to stop. I'm not saying that if you play your heart out when, some, every, when you know, some techies is feeding couriers and suiciding off cooldown, I'm not saying that he's going to stop 100% of the time. That's not what I'm trying to say. But what I'm saying is that in one out of every few games, somebody will, and you'll actually end up winning. But if you allow them to get to you, and you allow them to win, to get that victory of, of bother actually bothering you, then you're going to be the one that's going to lose the game for your team, because you're going to stop trying hard, and, and you're going to stop typing and being encouraging and positive and all that stuff that allows you to win a game. So always try hard, and the way I do this is I view solo queue as practice. So even if a game is totally out of hand, we're totally losing, I see it as this is practice that the people that I'm competing with, the people that I'm trying to get MMR over, the people that I'm competing with and competitive for me personally, if if they're playing these games and they are being toxic and they are allowing that to get to them and they're not playing it as practice, then guess what? 
I'm getting more practice than them by practicing in those games, so it actually benefits you. And then also the second benefit of the second rule of always trying hard, even in courier feeding games, is that if you try hard in those games and you don't allow it to tilt you and you don't allow yourself to lose that competitive spirit, you're going to go into the next game and you're going to be totally fine. You're going to be ready to go. But if you allow it to get to you, that person is going to get more than just the victory within that game. They're going to ruin other games for you. So you see how this is just beneficial to you to always be trying hard, uh, even if there's courier feeders? Okay, so that's the second rule. And this third one might, might sound a little ridiculous, and uh, this is more of a personal one for me, and I've actually heard this one from a lot of other professional players that I've spoken with work out. And uh, once again, might sound ridiculous, but hear me out on this. So doing something outside of Dota, um, particularly working out in this case, is a really good way to give you confidence and mental stability in the game, especially because I'm working out. Honestly, it's like a life hack. I'm sure a lot of you guys do work out already, and that's great. And for the guys that for the guys that don't, essentially, after you work out, you feel like you're this big sexy hunk, even if you're just some scrawny little bitch like me. You know what I mean? You feel great. And the reason for that is just because your brain just gets all these chemicals that just go ham and and make you feel. It's pretty much like taking cocaine except without the negative effects. It's really really insane, and nothing can happen if I've worked out and I go play a game. Even if I've worked out in the past couple of days, I'm talking like just do some push-ups, do do a little bit of cardio, run for a bit, do jumping jacks, anything, do absolutely anything physical to allow you to get that endorphin boost, to allow you to get that confidence outside of the game. So that way, when you miss a couple hooks on Pudge, you're not getting performance anxiety and missing every other hook, because you don't give a fuck. If you feel good, you don't care what people think about you. You don't care, and working out allows you to do that. So that's actually why this is a rule on here, because it's just so overpowered. And uh, I, I usually find myself losing a lot more when I'm not working out. And I won't name names on who I've talked to about this, but a lot of pros do this. Um, and of course, you can probably think of a couple of notable examples. Cough, cough, complexity, old complexity players. Um, anyway, so rule number four, absolutely no distractions when you're doing solo queue. And I know that kind of sounds like, you know, Jenkins, it's a game. I want to have fun. I want to play with, you know, and have a great time. But you can have fun while winning as well. Like the point of solo queue and the point of reading this guide is like, how can you win at any cost? You're competitive, right? How can you, how can you win without, you know, shoving a steak knife in your orifices, something that's painful and dreadful like that, you know, that's maybe not the best example. But what I'm essentially saying is you can have fun while also focusing entirely on the competitive aspect and trying really, really hard. You can still have fun and the next rule we'll talk about this but there are ways to if you feel like that you don't want to to play that hard you don't want to try your hardest there are ways to still play dota and and not hurt your solo mmr not hurt your solo queuing because it's it's a you know doggy dog world man it's like do or die you got you got to gain that mmr at any cost so essentially what i'm saying is you should disable skype steam messages do not alt tab to reddit do not alt tab at all not even during pauses if you want to gain mmr because if they pause you alt tab you go into the game, all of a sudden, you have no idea what's going on because you alt-tabbed and you're not focused on the game. Um, I understand that it's not really, like, casual to to not be able to alt-tab and go to Reddit. And believe me, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of this. I definitely do this all the time. I know a lot of pros do. But I'm just saying the the if you can absolutely try your hardest to not distract yourself during a game, you will benefit greatly. So... Don't respond to Steam messages. Don't don't respond to Skype. Nothing like that. Do your best if you can, unless it's some emergency. You know what I mean. Um, so the next rule that I talked about, uh, I think this is. Let me count one, two, three, four, five. I should probably number these. But the next rule, number five, is to use party queue if you want to play Dota really badly, but you feel like you're in a bad mood for it. So if you're feeling tired, angry, sad, or clowny or anything like that, use use party queue. It's it's totally cool to, to, to play party queue. Uh, if you don't have any friends to play with, like me, uh, you can go and do unranked and, you know, have have fun in there, pick invoker offlane, do whatever. Do not do any of the throwy shit in solo queue games. Never throw solo queue games. Ever, ever, ever. Not in any, not in any scenario because in those games that you do throw, those are plus 25s that you're, that you're missing that if you, if you go even, 
if you go totally even, you throw a couple of games. It's like, imagine if you didn't throw those games. You'd just be plus like 50 or 75 for the night. God, that that's... Uh, you, you could be 7K MMR if you just don't throw. And if you just use party queue and use unranked for, for those throwy moods, whether it be tilting or being sad or clowny or anything like that. So make sure to utilize party queue, utilize unranked. It's there for a reason. And you can go have fun. Dota is a game. You're supposed to have fun. But solo queue is, is a very competitive i know if you're watching this you probably have a competitive nature around solo queue and you want to get some really really high mmr and people at the top they are like this so if you want to to play with the big dogs you have to be like this as well um so rule number six is if you're getting angry or you find yourself autopiloting so if you're kind of grinding too much dota and you're just kind of in this like how do I describe it? You know, you're just playing game after game after game after game, kind of losing, not doing too hot, not doing too, whether it's anger or sadness or clowny or anything like that. If you find yourself autopiloting or being tilted or anything like that, use the 2020 rule. So just take a step back from your computer, look at something that's like 20 feet away for 20 seconds, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth, and just think about nothing. Think about your breathing. That's it. This will take you out of the game. It'll calm you down. It'll chill you out, and you'll you'll return to that heightened cognition of actually wanting to, to play Dota. And you can do this while you're dead in a game, too, if you want. And this has helped me a lot. Sometimes I'll be feeding, like, seven deaths on the offlane, and I'll just be like, all right, I need to change my mentality. How do I do it? And I use this 2020 rule where I'll just take, I'll just essentially take a walk. And I've seen people do this during competitive games, actually. People will literally stop a competitive game, they'll pause, and they'll just take a walk because somebody is, somebody needs it. Somebody needs to just chill out. And just do the you know do the deep breathing and and get back into the game and have that higher level of cognition so make sure to use that rule essentially i'm saying uh take take little breaks if you have to even if it's during a game just to clear your mind because it's very very bad to you can lose a lot of mmr on those lost streaks where you're just grinding and kind of like losing 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 autopiloting that sort of thing um so the next rule is a little specific uh, i believe this is rule number seven and the rule is to solo queue only between 5 p.m. and 2 a.m. of the specific server that you're on. And I find that these are kind of the magic numbers over the years. Um, maybe a little before 5, maybe a little after 2 a.m. But this is kind of when most of the gamers are awake. And you can party queue otherwise. You can totally play Dota. You know, Dota's fun. Have a great time. Uh, but it, solo queuing, like solo... Solo queue is where it's at between those hours. So you're going to be... You're going to have more people that speak your language. You're going to have more people who... Are, are strong players you're gonna have higher rated games you're gonna have more games that are catered to having mo the most people near your rating because they're just more people within the the pool the algorithm can pick all the people that are that are perfect for you um that's definitely really really important uh, i guess i guess one kind of side note here is that um you can I, I, do, I do believe that there is some sort of maybe this is some conspiracy theory shit but i do believe that there is some sort of like hidden pool mechanism in dota so uh and i believe that you're more likely to get hidden pooled outside of this this time uh air this time space because there's less people in in the in the queue but anyway that's that's all conjecture who knows with valve so the final rule the eighth rule is um pretty important if you're on a two game loss streak take a break play another game um this will allow you to get out of a certain pool of players that perhaps you don't mesh with like i said possibly hidden pool i don't know how the algorithm works i'm not a valve employee unfortunately um so if you're on a two game loss streak take a break and uh, it'll also allow you to like calm relax you know regain happiness all that sort of stuff and it is very important to follow this even though um a lot of people speaking of speaking of a uh, low priority and loss streaks and all that stuff but um essentially that's that's all you need to do take a break if you're losing because otherwise you're going to keep losing and that kind of goes back to the 2020 rule but i'm just saying if you if you lose two games in a row for sure take like a long break you want you have to want to play dota to be successful at dota and that's something that i've realized honestly lately is that if i don't want to play a hero if i don't want to play dota what's the point i'm just going to play to a lower standard and i'm not going to be the rating that i'm currently at so make sure that you're taking those breaks and kind of just getting a healthy balance of things in your life that's not just Dota. So those are the rules, and um, you can follow the majority of them, and you'll probably be very successful. Um, but I would say try to follow all of them because you will have weakness because you're human. You will 
fail at some of these things, you will alt tab to Reddit sometimes. So I would just say, um, if anybody's familiar with Nietzsche, there's some construct called the Ubermensch, and it's this greater than man man that people aspire to be to because it's perfection and therefore nobody will ever really really become the ubermensch um at least in my interpretation of nietzsche but humanity will have a purpose because they'll always be trying to strive to be the best and to to be that that idea of a perfect person um and that's kind of how this is i would say try to do them all because you're human you will fail but you'll get you will get higher MMR just on the basis of, of progressing towards something and, and improving and going to tr and trying to be very very strict with these rules. So anyway, uh, those are the rules. Hopefully you can gain some MMR with those. Please leave some comments below. I'd love to hear some success stories. Uh, the only people I've told these rules rules to are personal friends. So um, I would really love to hear if, if there's just anybody out there who's also having success with this. So thank you for, so much for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next video, and. Uh, hopefully in the rest of the series.